Okay, so we have been doing this chapter on uh, new and emerging technologies. We have already discussed uh, some of the emerging technologies such as yeah. artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, all right. So today we move on to another such uh, technology which is robotics. And why would we put robotics in this uh, category of emerging technologies? The reason is very simple that we have been talking about up till now and that is that it is a technology that has been around for many, many years, but it is still going through the process of evolution. Improvements are still going on. Okay. Now, how do we basically define a robot? A robot is a Basically, it is a multifunctional manipulator, or it's a it's a it's a machine that is able to perform uh, repetitive tasks based on you know whatever uh, programming that you have uh, that you have done in it. It will basically follow that program and it would perform certain tasks repeatedly, day in and day out. Unlike humans who when have to do things repetitively may get bored or they may get tired or their concentration span may, you know, may not be there. And as a result, whatever it is that the humans are involved in doing, you know, particularly say for instance, if we talk about manufacturing, then uh, the quality of the goods or the quality of the product which is being manufactured will be affected. Yeah, but none of such is a case or, or an issue with, with robots, okay, because they are programmed devices and they are programmed to perform something consistently in the same way day in and day out uh, with the same kind of efficiency, with the same kind of quality. So this is where robots come in very handy they are best at performing re repetitive tasks. Okay, if we have a look at what's uh, written here, it says robotics involves study of designing, building, and application of robots. So you design, you build, and then you use them or you apply them in a certain situation. Robots can be programmed to do any task automatically or through the direct instruction of the human. The word robot has salvic origins and comes from the word robota, which means forced work or labor. So there's a, there's a logic behind why robots are called robots. They say that, you know, the word has been taken from a, from a salvic origin, uh, the, the word robota or the term robota, which actually means forced work or labor. And that's what we use the robots for. Okay. Then we have a, a brief history of uh, where it all started and uh, how basically robots came into being and when people started making use of robots uh, in industry, at workplace, for other things, all right. So uh, we may not really get into the detail of that. Robots are normally automated using microprocessors and sensors. So, we know that robots are automatic devices. They are able to function on their own. All right, they are able to function on their own. Once, whatever program that they are supposed to follow when that program has been fed into them and uh, then when the robots are involved in, in the work that they are supposed to do, they will just follow the instructions coming from the program and uh, get the job done. And the main components that are involved in terms of the hardware, uh, of course, you have the overall design of the robot, it's, uh, it's mechanics and everything, the overall design, but 
we know that a robot is an electromechanical machine. Okay, it, it is it is something which consists of uh, mechanical move, move, moving parts, and of course, the the power to do work comes through comes through electricity. Okay, so you have you have the main brain inside of a robot, which is a microprocessor. This is the component which is actually programmed to make the robot function. And where do the inputs come from? The inputs come from the sensors. Okay, so sensors. We know that a sensor is uh, is an input device, or rather, I would say it is a direct data input device that gathers or captures data from its surroundings. Whatever relevant data that it is that it has to gather, it gathers that data from its surroundings, which may be in in a form which is not directly understood by the computer, such as uh, you know any physical properties. The data that sensors usually gather from their surroundings are related to physical quantities or properties, which normally exist in analog form. So when all this uh, data which is coming from the sensors, when it has to be input into the computer, it first needs to be converted into a digital form for uh, the robot to be able to store and process it. Okay, And then finally act upon it and you know do the action and get the task done. So that is something that we already know. Okay, let me refer to my notes as well. Let's see what do we have here. Okay, we have seen the intro. Robots may be divided into four types. We know what a robot is, what it is made up of, you know, in terms of the hardware as well, what the basic purpose of a robot is. But how can we categorize robots? Well, we can categorize them into four different types. Well, we have manufacturing robots, carrier robots, domestic robots, and exploration robots. Manufacturing robots being probably the most important of these types. And well, we do know that if there is one area where robots are used the most, it is manufacturing all over the world. And particularly, I think we were, we were talking about this earlier as well, that robots are uh, one industry where robots are used the most all over the world is car manufacturing industry. And then, of course, there are many other manufacturing industries where robots are used. So you see, one thing that is mentioned here is used to perform repetitive tasks. That is what robots are best at doing and it is for this very reason that robots are actually used in manufacturing industry because manufacturing involves tasks to be repeated over and over again. All right. Carrier robots used by the military to carry heavy loads over dangerous terrain. Carrier robots may even be used in, in manufacturing, you know, such as in, uh, in car manufacturing. It is carrier robots that that uh, d displace or that carry heavy objects from one point to the other. So, in the assembly of a car, I think uh, one part of a car which is probably the heaviest is the engine. And engines are manufactured at, at a different bay or at a different uh, you know location. So, when the engine has been assembled and now it has to be finally fitted into the structure, it has to be carried from uh, that point to the point where it needs to be fitted. So it's a heavy object, very heavy. You cannot, you know, ask humans to uh, to carry it. So robots are best at doing that. So carrier robots may be used here as well. Then we have domestic robots used in homes to perform cleaning tasks such as vacuuming. Well, not only vacuuming, dishwashing, uh, lawn moving and so on. So we have domestic robots and exploration robots used to visit and send images from places such as Mars. So you can send robots or machines to other planets for exploration and of course we have seen that happening and uh, so many such missions have been sent to moon and sent to Mars uh, and of course when they when they are placed on the planet, 
then they gather valuable information from there and they uh, send it to their earth stations for, uh, for any research work, all right? Some more typical tasks that robots can be used for are described below. Well, they are, they are good when it comes to performing dangerous jobs. For example, dispose, disposing of bombs, spray painting of cars, cleaning up nuclear waste. These are dangerous jobs. And dangerous, dangerous uh, not only uh, yeah, like in case of bomb disposal. If you expose humans to such an environment and uh, some, uh, some mis due to some mistake the bomb goes off, then you lose your life straight away. Okay? But when it comes to spray painting and, and cleaning up nuclear waste, that requires exp exposure to you know, harmful environments with certain chemicals and all that, okay? which may be detrimental to, uh, to one's health. So exposure to such environments is not a very good idea. So if machines can be used uh, for such tasks, then you know it is best that you involve machines in doing those tasks rather than exposing humans to such environments. Exploring extreme environments such as inside volcanoes, planets, depths of the ocean. There's only a certain depth to which uh, humans can go in the ocean. Beyond that, uh, it is, uh, you know, the, the pressure is such that you would not be able to sustain and force the oxygen levels and all that. So that recent incident that took place uh, of the Ocean Gate incident, that submersible that uh, went deep down in, in the sea for uh, exploring the wreck of Titanic. Yeah, you remember that? So Usme actually they at the end of the day to to find the rubble the of uh, the submersible they actually had to send a robot because at that that uh, depth human divers could not be sent so anyway and then so, so is the case with volcanoes and and other you know planets with extreme conditions repetitive manufacturing jobs that is what robots are best at doing such as in production lines packing welding and so on and moving heavy objects, installing large engines. I was just talking about this. Okay, what are the advantages of using robots? And uh, there are disadvantages as well. So quite a few advantages given here. By the way, there's a list of advantages and disadvantages given in your book as well. You can go over these as well, but I think this list is, uh, yeah, it is sufficient, but there's more detail here. So can go down, uh, can go far down into unknown places where humans would be crushed. So this is one point. Can perform tasks faster than humans. We know that most of robots are automatic, so they can move without any human interference. They can. Uh, entertain us and they can help us in certain tasks. So robots are able to function on their own automatically without human intervention. That is why when robots are at work, such as at assembly lines or uh, you know in other types of manufacturing processes, we may not be required to be there and they can still get the job done. You can use robots to produce products in the factory, such as assembly of cars. They can also be used to build parts of many products, such as plane parts, car parts, and so on. Robots do anything which we need to be precise and accurate. So we do know that, uh, you know, along with the fact that robots are best at performing repetitive tasks, it is not only that they are good at doing those tasks consistently, but they would also ensure a certain level of precision and accuracy. And that is where the quality is going to come in. All right. 
and of course they can work 24-7, 365. That results in greater production. Greater production would, would mean, uh, of course, you're more reachable in the market, more sales, more revenues, more profits. Okay, so that all sort of comes in as a result. Can endure hostile environment, interplanetary space, we were just talking about it, uh, any environment which is hazardous, they can uh, endure such environments and uh, work there efficiently without requiring humans to be exposed to such extreme environments. Carrying out repetitive and time-consuming tasks efficiently, they can adjust their parameters like their speed and time and so on. So they are automatic, so they are able to function automatically and do things in a way which is more efficient than humans. Robots do not require to sleep or take breaks. They are able to function without stopping. So uh, yes, we have, I think we have addressed this point. Harsh environments, they can go into space and in air, underwater, in extreme conditions, fire, because they're able to endure such environments and uh, that would result in human safety. Robots can do jobs people are unwilling to do. They can be sent to any planet in the solar system. I mean, not any planet, but the ones that are only reachable by humans. They can be stronger than people. Robots in the welfare eliminate putting more people at risk. So yeah, this is the way it is. So these are some of the advantages. What are the disadvantages? Need a supply of power. Uh, People can lose jobs in factories, so robots do cause unemployment, we do know that. So that's one of the social issues that we associate with introduction of robots. They need maintenance to keep them running. It costs a lot of money to make or buy robots, so yes, the initial cost of making or uh, installing robots is high but in the long run they may turn out to be a cheaper alternative compared to having to pay monthly wages to to human labor okay so the maintenance costs that uh, may have to be incurred over a period of time may not be as high as having to pay regular wages so cost money much money in maintenance and repair. The programs need to be updated to suit the changing environments. In case of breakdown, the cost of repair may be very high. So uh, with robots, you may need updating them from time to time, depending upon the change in their, uh, any change in any process that involves a robot will require the robot uh, to be reprogrammed as well, or the programs to be updated to to suit the changing, you know, process. So that is also something that involves cost. Can store large amounts of data, but the storage access retrieval is not as effective as the human brain. They can perform repetitive tasks for a long time, but they do not get better with experience such as humans do. Well, this is a bit debatable. We can say that uh, yes, they are not they are not intelligent. They are not creative. Cannot create anything on their own. Really, they, they lack common sense, and they can only develop intelligence to a certain level, right? So yes, uh, not being creative and uh, not having common sense, not being able to deal with anything unforeseen would remain a drawback with robots are not able to act any different from what they are programmed to do. So yes, 
they will only do what they are programmed to do and uh, particularly manufacturing robots that have to do repetitive tasks that does not require any any creativity or any change in the way things are done so uh, will not be able to do anything different from whatever they have been programmed to do and that is what they are actually best at doing they are not intelligent they can never improve the results of their jobs outside of their predefined programming so this is something that we have talked about that they, they can't be creative, they cannot invent. If at all they need to do something differently, they will first have to be programmed to do that by humans. Can take the place of many humans in factories. So people have to find new jobs to be uh, or, or be retrained. So one, one thing is, you know, of course, because of introduction of robots, they may replace uh, human labor, so you may lose a job or else, you know, you may need to retrain yourself or, or acquire a certain skill to still uh, remain employed. All right. So, yes, they can cause large scale unemployment, particularly in the manufacturing sector. So, these are some of the advantages and disadvantages of using robots. Okay. Uh, we have been talking about this as well, where technology is used to produce prosthetic limbs, which is uh, artificial uh, limbs or body parts to be replaced in people okay who who lose them maybe due to some uh, due to some uh, health issue or you know because of an accident or something so robotic prosthetics is rapidly developing area in medicine a robotic prosthetic can be connected to the human mind this can allow a human to train their brain to be able to move the robotics in the prosthetic creating a working limb again so, sensors can do that. You can actually train a prosthetic robotic limb uh, to act or work the way you wish it to. Now, this is, this is different from the prosthetics that we were talking about otherwise, which uh, involves making of an artificial or organ or limb or a body part made up of uh, you know, something such as a plastic, yeah, which is, this is just a replacement. Here it is a different thing altogether. This is where it's a robotic device that you may get connected or the, that you may, uh, you know, uh, get your artificial, you know, sorry, your actual limb replaced with or actual part. And then you may over a period of time train it to act to your, uh, you know, you, you, you're thinking or the way you're thinking. So this is what uh, they're talking about here. So this is, this is a little different from what we have discussed so far when it comes to use of prosthetics or involvement of technology in creation of prosthetics. Nanorobots, we have talked about the use of nanotechnology in uh, the field of medical science or medicine. Remember, we were talking about uh, about poly pills and all that, and we were talking about small, very small microchips being uh, inserted in different parts of the body to monitor the working of uh, a certain organ, such as the heart or the brain or the lungs, yeah, and uh, be able to collect valuable data to make sure that uh, if there's anything that, that is going wrong medically with any of those parts, it can be preempted and you can be sort of pre-warned about it. 
so that you can take some some preventive measures or actions to make sure that uh, you can stop a certain uh, health related issue from from arising in first place you know if you can preempt or you can be pre pre warmed uh, pre warned then of course you can plan it much better and you can you can stop something from happening it's something like that okay so it is possible to put nano robots very small microscopic robots into humans blood stream to track down and eliminate certain medical conditions i was just talking about this they could also be used to perform internal surgeries in places that are normally very challenging to reach for surgeons all right nano robots could revolutionize cancer treatment by tracking down and destroying cancer cells in the body targeting that particular specific area where the problem is without affecting the rest of uh, the body so at microscopic level being able to at the at the atomic at the molecular level being able to uh reach out to certain parts of the human body you know the cells and performing the the treatment there only in that particular section hence you know being able to to deal with it at uh, at a more localized level where the problem is without affecting the rest of the body okay so this could yes as it says this this, this can revolutionize uh, the treatments in uh, the field of medical science so this is true okay so that is uh, all that we need to discuss about uh, robotics we have spoken about this in the past as well in certain other topics as well wherever there was a requirement but yes robotics is a technology which is very much a part of uh, emerging technologies any question anyone sure okay okay great